Months after his recovery, Adele gradually began to regain some of his physical and mental strength. Although his memory still played tricks on him, with certain events and details slipping away, he knew he couldn't remain in the shadows any longer. His old passion for justice and his desire to become a successful lawyer still burned inside him like a flame that refused to be extinguished despite the storms he had faced. One morning, as Adele sat in his modest home, he looked at the old papers that contained notes from his university studies. His eyes gleamed with longing for the courtroom, for the arguments and critical moments. He decided that the time had come to re-enter the world he loved. Adele headed to a small law office run by lawyer Sammy, an elderly attorney known for his wisdom and extensive experience in the legal field. Adele had known him before the terrible accident and Sammy had told him that he would be happy to train and support him as he began his legal career. Adele knocked lightly on the door and Sammy opened it with a warm smile. The office was simple, filled with legal books scattered across tables and shelves. Adele, I'm so happy to see you. I heard you fully recovered, Sammy said with a tone filled with optimism. Adele smiled lightly and replied, Thank you, Mr. Sammy. Some things are still unclear in my mind, but I feel ready to return, even if it's going to be difficult. Adele sat down in the office where Sammy handed him his first case to work on. It was a relatively simple case involving a family dispute over property distribution. The case wasn't large, but it was Adele's first step back into the legal arena. As he read through the documents, feelings of fear and doubt began to creep in. He questioned his ability to resolve the case and wondered if he still possessed the necessary skills. He hesitated for a moment but then, the memory of his battle with the evil spirits on the island returned to his mind. I've faced worse, and I won't let these doubts stop me now, he thought to himself. Over the following days, Adele continued training under Sammy's supervision. He attended court sessions, learning how to prepare cases and analyze legal documents. Sammy always encouraged him, providing valuable advice. Yet Sammy knew that Adele needed to face bigger challenges to fully regain his confidence. One day a new file arrived at Sammy's office involving a complex criminal case, a young man accused of a crime he did not commit. Sammy asked Adele to handle the defense under his supervision. This was the opportunity Adele needed to prove himself. One evening as Adele was walking home after an exhausting day at court, he suddenly felt a change in the atmosphere. The air around him grew heavier, as if the entire place had turned into a deep void. Adele stopped and looked around, realizing the street was completely empty. There was no sound, no cars, no people, nothing. It was just him and the emptiness that seemed to stretch endlessly. His heart began to race, and shadows appeared before him, similar to those he had seen on the island. They hovered around him, speaking in hushed tones. You've returned, O oh, awaited one. The journey isn't over yet. Adele looked around in surprise, not expecting to experience these visions again. He tried to maintain his composure and said firmly, What do you want from me? Hasn't my story with you ended? A dark entity appeared, stronger and more merciless than anything he had faced before. Its eyes held an eternal darkness, like stones from the depths of hell. You proved your strength on the island, but now? Now you must face the final test. You must confront your greatest fear. Adele was breathing heavily. What is this fear? I've faced all of you. What could be stronger than that? The entity smiled coldly and said, Your fear isn't in us, it's in you. The fear of failure, the fear of being inadequate. You must face the truth of your own self. Suddenly, the scene around him changed. Adele found himself in a courtroom again, but this time, he wasn't the lawyer. He was the defendant, sitting in the dock. Everyone in the room was staring at him with suspicion, including Sammy and his family. Adele, you are charged with failure, with being unable to achieve what you promised yourself. The words came from the judge, who seemed to be a manifestation of the dark entity. Adele tried to respond, but he felt a strange paralysis, as if his words had been frozen. All the fears he had tried to bury came back to haunt him. What if I've let everyone down? What if this is the end? His heart pounded violently. This wasn't just a battle with evil creatures, it was a battle with himself. With every word from those around him, he felt that this was the most difficult test he had ever faced. The voice of the old woman echoed in his mind, The greatest battle is the one you fight with yourself. Don't let your fears defeat you. Adele gathered his strength and stood in the dock speaking with a trembling yet determined voice. I've fought many battles but the greatest is with myself. I take responsibility for my mistakes, and I fear failure, but that doesn't mean I will surrender. The dock began to fade, and the scene around him transformed into light. Suddenly Adele found himself standing in the middle of the courtroom, no longer the defendant but the lawyer defending himself. 
I won't let fear chain me, I will move forward, even if the road is full of difficulties. The dark entity retreated and gradually disappeared, leaving behind a sense of calm and peace. Adele awoke from his dream. He was sitting in his office with his new case files in front of him. He took a deep breath and realized that the real test hadn't been with external darkness, but with the inner darkness he had always tried to avoid. He smiled slightly, understanding the lesson at last. There may be obstacles in the future, and he might sometimes fear failure, but now, he was ready to move forward with courage and confidence. Adele spent long nights preparing his defense, studying every detail of the case and looking for the flaws in the evidence presented against him. He knew that the young man's fate depended on his ability to prove his innocence, and that made the weight of responsibility even heavier. On the day of the trial, Adele stood before the judge for the first time since the accident. He was filled with tension, but with each word he spoke, his confidence gradually returned. He presented his arguments with strength and conviction, turning the evidence in favor of the defendant, leading to his acquittal. When the judge announced the verdict, Adele felt an overwhelming surge of pride and relief. He knew that this victory wasn't just for the innocent young man, but also a victory over the doubts and fears that had plagued him. From that moment, Adele knew that nothing could stop him again. One day, while Adele was immersed in case files at the courthouse, he heard a muffled sound coming from one of the corners of the hall. He turned to see an elderly man sitting on a wooden bench, his face pale, and his eyes red from crying. The man was wiping his tears with the sleeve of his shirt, clearly overwhelmed with despair and pain. Adele approached him cautiously, gently placing a hand on his shoulder. Is there something I can do to help? He asked in a quiet voice. The man raised his tear-filled eyes to Adele. My daughter, my daughter. They accused her of rioting and protesting and they arrested her unjustly. She's a good girl, she would never do such things. His voice trembled with sorrow. Adele's heart sank upon hearing the man's story. Don't worry sir, tell me all the details, I'll do everything in my power to help you. The man began to recount the story of his daughter, how she had been an exemplary student with dreams of a bright future, and how she had fallen victim to false accusations. He shared his feelings of helplessness in being unable to help her. Adele listened intently, and when the man finished speaking he said, don't worry, I'll personally take on your daughter's case. I will do everything I can to prove her innocence and secure her release. The man felt relieved to hear Adele's words, his heart filled with renewed hope. He thanked Adele for his kindness and promises and then Adele headed to the courtroom for the hearing. Adele entered the courtroom with steady steps, holding the case file in his hands. He looked around as he made his way to his seat. The atmosphere was tense with the audience watching anxiously. The dim lighting added to the seriousness and gravity of the situation. The murmurs of the lawyers, the clicking of pens, and the firm voice of the judge filled the room. The faces of the litigants reflected a mixture of anxiety and hope, and the lawyers were focused on their papers. Court clerk, in a loud voice. Case number 1453, the defendants, the first, second, and fifth defendants, Alia Omar. Adele froze for a moment, the voice ringing in his ears. Alia Omar, he thought seeing a memory flash of a girl watering flowers in a garden. Do I know her? What are these memories? Fragmented memories spun in Adele's head, showing blurry images of Alia watering flowers, smiling at him. He felt the intensity of a headache increasing. Judge, firmly, go ahead, Mr. Adele. Adele held his head in his hands, trying to fight the headache. Just a moment, is this a headache or are these memories? Judge, louder, Mr. Adele, proceed. Adele snapped back to attention and tried to regain his focus. Yes, Your Honor. Judge, do you have any requests? Adele, steadily. Yes, Your Honor. I request a postponement to thoroughly review the case and the evidence. Judge, evaluating Adele. Very well, the case is postponed for a week. Court clerk, loudly. The session is adjourned for a week. Adele left the courtroom feeling confused. What just happened to me? Why did I remember this girl? Adele, talking to himself. Alia Omar, why does the name sound familiar? Could she be part of my lost memories? As he passed by the elderly man waiting outside, the man looked up at Adele, filled with anxiety. Elderly man, worried. Mr. Adele, will you be able to help my daughter? Adele, with a reassuring smile. Yes, I'll do everything I can, but I need some time to thoroughly review all the details. Elderly man, sighing. Thank you, I know she's innocent. Adele sat in his office, opening the file and starting to go through the details. Alia Omar. He stopped at a photo of Alia, looking at it intensely. Is this the same girl from my memories? Sammy, walking into the office. Adele, how was the session? Adele, thoughtfully. It was a bit unsettled. 
I asked for a postponement to review the case. Sammy, smiling. You acted wisely. Sometimes time is all we need to understand things clearly, Adele, in a reflective tone. There's something familiar about this girl. I feel like I've known her before. Could she be part of the memories I've lost? Sammy, thoughtful. Maybe she is. Let time reveal the truth to you. Focus on the case and everything will become clear in due time. Adele worked diligently, gathering evidence and listening to witness testimonies. He was determined to prove Alia's innocence. He felt something inside telling him she was innocent, though his fragmented memories kept surfacing, showing Alia in various places, as if they had spoken before, as if there was a strong bond between them. After a long day at the office, Adele returned home exhausted, only to be surprised by his friend Ashraf and some of his old colleagues from his time working at the rice mill. They were waiting for him in the living room. The atmosphere was cheerful, and they shared stories and old memories. Ashraf, with a wide grin, Ah, you finally come, we've been waiting for you. Old colleagues, in unison. Adele, how are you? Welcome back. Adele, smiling. Oh, welcome, how is everyone? I wasn't expecting this surprise. They all sat around the table exchanging stories and laughter, reminiscing about the days they spent working together at the rice mill. The laughter grew louder as they recalled both tough and funny times they had experienced together. Ashraf, teasing. Do you remember the nights we spent packing rice and planning big things for the future? Adele, laughing. Oh, how could I forget? Those were tough days but also enjoyable, though I've lost a big part of my memories unfortunately. Ashraf, with a playful smile. Adele? Do you even remember me at all? Adele, laughing. No, I don't, and I don't want to either. Ashraf, laughing. All right, but what about Alia? Do you remember her? Suddenly, Adele froze, his eyes widening in surprise. Alia? He asked, confused. Ashraf, seriously. Yes, Alia, the girl you used to talk about all the time. You were infatuated with her. Adele, in a trembling voice. Ashraf, I need to know everything. What do you remember? Ashraf began telling Adele about his memories with Alia, recounting the love story Adele had shared with her. Ashraf, reflectively. I remember once you said she would always be a part of your life. Adele, trying to piece together his memories. I recall fragmented parts, but not everything. It feels like incomplete pictures. Ashraf, encouragingly. Don't worry, everything will return gradually. You just need to give yourself time. Adele, whispering. I feel like I know her, like she's a part of me, but the memories are so unclear. Ashraf, with a comforting smile. What's important is that now you know the truth you'll find your way to remember everything. After his friends left, Adele sat in his room, holding the picture of Alia that he found in the case file. He felt that there was still so much missing, but now he had a starting point to uncover his past and learn about his connection to Alia. Adele, looking at the picture. Alia, I will uncover everything. I'll retrieve my memories and learn what brought us together. Adele dove into his work, searching for the evidence to prove Alia's innocence. The task was challenging and filled with obstacles. He visited witnesses, reviewed video footage, and tried to piece together the events. Adele, working day and night. I must find the evidence that will turn the tide. Alia doesn't deserve to be wrongfully imprisoned. Adele faced numerous hurdles. Some witnesses refused to cooperate while others were afraid to speak out. Yet, he persisted. Finally, Adele found crucial evidence a video recording clearly showing that Alia was nowhere near the scene of the riot when it occurred. She was with a group of students at the university library, quietly studying. Adele, with a triumphant smile. This is the evidence I've been looking for. Now I can prove her innocence. On the day of the trial, Adele stood before the judge with unwavering composure, holding the case file and the evidence he had gathered. Adele, with a firm voice. Your Honor, esteemed members of the court, Today, I present to you a case unlike any other. This is the case of an innocent girl, wrongfully accused of rioting and protesting. He begins presenting the evidence and witness testimonies he has collected. Adele, with passion. I have brought before you today irrefutable evidence proving my client Alia Omar's innocence. This young woman was not at the scene of the events, rather she was elsewhere studying and pursuing her dreams. He pauses for a moment, looking at the audience. Adele, with a moving tone. Your Honor, justice is not merely laws and rulings, it is the spirit of humanity, the hope for a better future. Today we ask you to restore Alia's freedom to return her dignity. Let us be fair, let us look at the evidence through the eyes of justice and declare Alia Omar innocent. Let us give her back her right to hope and her right to dream. Everyone in the courtroom watched Adele with admiration. He had delivered a closing argument that would be remembered for a long time. Judge, calmly, we will review the evidence presented, 
and a verdict will be announced at the end of the session. Court clerk, loudly. The session is adjourned. The courtroom was packed with attendees and the media. Everyone waited anxiously for the judge's decision. Judge, in a firm voice, after reviewing the evidence and testimonies, and after careful consideration of all aspects of the case, the judge paused and everyone held their breath. Judge, we declare Alia Omar not guilty of all charges.